Today we want to really only look at two examples, but our goal here is just to, to take what we know about linear functions and compare the, the, the features of two different linear functions. And those functions may be given to us in a little different way. One might be a table, the other might be an equation, one might be a graph. One might be an equation. We're just going to compare the features. We're just taking, looking at them, taking all the information we've learned so far in linear equations, and saying, "Okay, this is the, these are the features. This is what we see about these two functions." Okay, so that's what we're working on. We're only going to look at two examples today. This is part one of a two-part lesson, and uh, this is the first one. So we want to compare the initial value of um, and the range for each of these two. Now the first function is f of x and we see that f of x is here. It's given to us in a table. And then the other function is g of x and it's given to us in an expression or an equation. It is g of x is equal to x plus 6. All right. So reading the instructions, that's the stuff that's in bold print up there. I'm asked to do a couple of things. First thing I'm asked to do is compare the initial value and the range of each of these two functions. So I want to know what the initial value is and what the range is. Now, it tells me in the problem that the domain, here's the word domain, the domain is a set of all real numbers between 2 and 5. And what we see in our table is our domain starts with 2, it ends at 5, okay? Here's 2. Here's five, and what that statement says, all real numbers, it means everything in between. They just gave us four points in the table. But remember, a linear function, will graph is a line, and it represents all the points. Okay, so, so we have a table with four points, and, and we've got the domain going from two to five, remember domains are x or input. And we've also got some y values. So, so that makes this one kind of easy. My initial value, looking at the table, okay, my initial value is the first one. It is this one here. So when x is 2, f of x, or well, y has a value of 5. So my initial value is at 2, y is 5. That's my initial value. What am I asked to find? My ending value then is the last one. It is the last of the domain, or 5. So it, it, when we put an x in of 5, we get a y of 11. What am I asked to find? Now, looking at this, then my range represents an R, is from 5 to 11. I'll write that in interval notation. I also can write that in uh, using inequalities. I can say, well, 5 is less than, my range is 5 is less than or equal to f of x, or my y value, which is less than or equal to 11. That's my range. I can see my range right here. Okay, 5, 7, 9, 11. So it goes from 5 to all the way to 11. My y values go from 5 to 11. Now, it's not as obvious from a g function. Now, remember, I know that my domain for the g function, because it tells me the problem, that it goes from 2 to 5, just like the domain does for the f function. 
But to find my initial value here, then all I have to do is put a 2 in for x and find out what is this function at 2. So g of 2 equals 2 plus 6, which is equal to 8. That's my initial value. And my ending value is when I look at g of 5, you'd be writing this down, Deb. I'm going to plug in a 5 for x plus 6, and I get 11. So in my range here, the range is goes from 8 to 11. In interval notation, I can write my range between 8 and 11. And I can also write it this way. 8 is less than or equal to, uh, this is g of x, which is less than equal to 11. In other words, my range value, my alpha values, my, my, my y values, my dependent values cover the interval of 8 to 11. So uh, if I look at those two, then I see that, uh, that the f function, f of x, has a small, has a, excuse me, a larger range, right? If you look down the y-axis, it starts at 5 and goes to 11, whereas the g is 8 to 11. Yeah, so it's a, it has a smaller range. Let's look at one more problem. This is a, just a two-problem lesson. Give me just a second to finish jotting all that down. actually have a couple more problems on you know, this presentation that looks just like this, so we're just going to kind of bypass those today. We'll come back to them on Monday when we look at part two. But I want to do a similar kind of comparison between two functions where one of those functions is a graph, okay, instead of a table. So look at this one, please. Here we've got the function... Um, f and g, and uh, we want to compare their domains, their ranges, their slopes, their y-intercepts. <coughs> now this function in the graph, well that is g of x now. Okay? And let's look at g of x first. Now, we, in order to compare them, in order to really move forward, it tells us to write a, a rule. Well, if I look at the graph, I see that I've got a y-intercept that's 0 and negative 8. Okay? And I also see I have a slope. Look at what's going on here. So I move forward 1. As I run forward 1, I rise 1, 2, 3. Four, five. Now, I, I do notice that this is scaled. Each tick mark actually represents four. Okay? But these are evenly spaced, and I could say, well, this is like one, a run of one, and this is a rise of five. And so I would look at that and say my slope is five over one, or just five. Okay. However, um, would it be the same if I do it by the fours the way it's marked off? Well, check it out. If I look at it this way, so this first tick mark actually represents four. So that would technically really be four. And as I move up, it's four, eight. 12, 
1620. So this would actually technically be 20. Okay, so if I write that as a slope, that would be 20 over 4. What is 20 over 4? Uh, yeah, so the same. So, you know, it's because those tick marks are proportional, and, and I can just count tick marks, and so it actually kind of reduces my fraction form. So that, that'll work. So if I write a rule, here's my rule. This is g of x. That equals uh, mx, so it would be 5x, and then my y-intercept is negative 8 minus. So I've got a rule. Okay. Looking at the other function, the other function says, and this is the function of y, I'll write it in red, um, or the function of f of x. f of x has a slope of 6, 6x. Y intercept of 20. So if I go back to my graph and I look at the graph, remember that my x values, what, what are my possible x values? Um, this doesn't have a beginning or end because my line has arrow, which means it's going on forever. So my domain here. Should write it in blue. Uh, my domain, my x values, this line goes on forever, so my domain is all real numbers. In other words, everything. Guess what my range is doing too? Does it go up forever and down forever? Yeah, so my range too is all real numbers. And if I look at the f of x function, I realize that there's no limitation here in my domain. I could plug any x in I want to. It doesn't say not to. So my domain 2 is all real numbers. And my range will give me every possible value for y, so it too is all real numbers. All right, so, so far, we found our domain, we found our range. We've identified that in this one, the slope um, is 6, and the y-intercept is 20. And on the function of g, the uh, Slope was 5. The y-intercept was negative 8. Does it ask me to find anything else? I don't believe so. So I, I look at these lines and I see that this one has a steeper slope. 6 is steeper than the slope of this line, which is 5. I know it's steeper because... 6 is a larger number than 5. I also know that this is vertically translated up the y-axis 20. So we'll find its location much higher on the y-axis than we do this graph where it's lower. It intersects the y-axis at ne negative 8. So those are the features we've already learned about linear equation. It helps us to compare them. Helps us to look at them. At some point, these two equations would intersect because this, one has a steeper slope than the other. They have to cross at some point. And later on, we're going to find out that where those two lines cross will be of some serious interest to us. So that gets us started comparing um, a couple of linear functions.